So tomorrow is the big day, fellas. Uh, I want to remind everybody that free speech in this election is at risk. All right, guys, let's get into it. So like I said in the intro, tomorrow's the big day. I'll be going to vote as soon as I get out of work. Uh, obviously, as you already know, I'm voting for Trump because lots of there's lots of reasons, but the most important issue to me this election is free speech. And there are other important issues, obviously. The, the economy is one of them. Firearms is another. But free speech to me is the most important of these issues because, as you already know, many of you already know, this allows for the conversation to take place, the tr a truth, true conversation to take place about these other issues. So anyway... And, and I've done videos on some of these statements before, but because the election's tomorrow, I just want to kind of hit this point home and remind everybody. Democrats take aim at free speech. Did someone send out a memo or has the shock of encountering the wild variety of views visible in Elon Musk's X just been too much for grandees used to moving in circles where the acceptable boundaries of disagreement are narrowly drawn? When John Kerry recently spoke of dislike of and anguish over social media, he was presumably referring to how he and like-minded others, among them it turned out another failed presidential candidate, Hillary Clinton, reacted as they watched the wrong sorts of ideas openly discussed on major online platforms. For his part, Kerry was talking about climate misinformation, a word that, in the hands of those who manipulate its meaning, can encompass not only a misstatement of fact, but also, all too frequently, nothing more than the expression of a heterodox point of view. Such fine distinctions, we suspect, are of little interest to carry. Instead, he bemoaned the way that people no longer turn to the referees we used to have to determine what's true, but the horror self-select where they go for their news, for their information. Yeah, and look, this is 100% uh, the, the main policy position of Democrats, and that is to bottleneck information down from the federal government. And that is to say... The federal government is going to be the arbiter of what is true and what is not true. And essentially, you do end up with like a Ministry of Truth situation, you know, 1984. And we don't want that. Okay, nobody wants that. The government has agendas. People have agendas. Politicians have agendas. The best place for people to make judgments about the validity of information is themselves. And... It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to fall for, you know, misinformation. The, the big problem here is, is who is deciding what is considered misinformation, what is not. Ideally, you want a robust marketplace of ideas where good information is presented to combat other information. Sometimes it's good information combating good information. Sometimes it's good information combating bad information. And the point is, is to allow people to make those judgments for themselves based on how good the information is that's being put forward. And in either case, you know, if, if the majority of people are going to fall, let's say, for a lie, which many do, it's you should still maintain a certain amount of self-respect and dignity in your, you know, to make those judgments for yourself. And to not have somebody else make those judgments for you, to not have somebody else tell you what you can see, what you can think, anybody, but especially the government. Is the government trustworthy enough to be the sole arbiter of what's true and what's not? No. No government is. Again, governments, people have agendas. So this is, this is about control. The idea that news or information should be curated by referees who check the refs for their bias is as patronizing as it, as it is incompatible with free speech and indeed science. Science is supposed to be the search for truth, not the acceptance of orthodoxy. Sadly, it is no surprise that Kerry described the First Amendment as a major block to hammering a source of information of which he disapproved out of existence. Yeah, look, you know, when you're talking about the scientific method and when, talk, when you're talking about what is considered true or not in science, you're the, the one of the biggest things the most important things that we do is like peer reviewed research. So you have other individuals you have looking into the research that's being done, looking into the papers that are being presented, the science that's being done. 
and finding ways in which that's incorrect. And again, and that's a version of combating, you know, information combating other information. It's the same type of process that we're talking about. Uh, but of course, with the general public more broadly, allowing people to look at the information, see the information they want to see, and compare and contrast that with other information and making a judgment call. At around the, and it's unfortunate, I will say, it, it is unfortunate how, unfortunately, there is a lot of, of our scientific institutions that have been like ideologically captured, and many of them have fallen into that orthodoxy, and they don't allow competing, or at least competing viewpoints or competing science is actually sidelined, but anyway. At around the same time, Clinton was talking about protecting the children, a ploy that she has a way of using when it's freedom enjoyed by adults that she truly has in her sights. She explained, We should be, in my view, repealing something called Section 230, which give which gave, you know, platforms in the internet immunity because they were thought to be just pass-throughs, that they shouldn't be judged for the content that is posted. But we now know that was an overly simple view, that if the platforms, whether it's Facebook or Twitter X or Instagram or TikTok, whatever they are, if they don't moderate and moderate monitor the content, we lose total control. And again, and that's that's saying the quiet part out loud. That's 100% what this is about. It's about Democrats wanting to control whatever narrative it is that they want to control. We need to remove the immunity from liability, and we need to have guardrails. We need regulation. Quite who we are was never made clear, but the reference to control is revealing enough as it is. Moderate in this context means censor. Clinton Kim complains about child pornography, understandably so, but that is already illegal, and social media companies do what they can to eliminate it. That's not her target. Yeah, and look, being very specific is 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 a good thing, right? So being very specific in like what type of content we're exactly talking about. So, for example, in the case of child pornography, that's very specific. You you can't post child pornography, exploitation of children, right? Most of us would agree that's totally fine, but. That's totally not the problem that we're having here, and that's not what mainstream Democrats are trying to do. Okay, it's just it's a it's a specific example that Democrats want to call your attention to to make their overall policies seem palatable. And their overall policies are to clamp down on free speech in order to control whatever narrative they would like to control, in order to funnel what they deem is the information that you should have. Section 230 is the legislative device that has opened the public square to voices that would not normally have made it there. Scrapping or gutting Section 230 would, by opening the doors to endless lawfare, do away with X and silence those annoying expressions of dissent from conventional thinking, and that, quite clearly, is what Clinton wants. In the meantime, Clinton has given an enthusiastic welcome to the EU's Digital, Digital Services Act, which, backed by the possibility of heavy fines, effectively brings U.S. social media companies substantial enough to have a large following in the EU within control of Brussels. The result, unless social media companies implement separate systems governing what their customers in the EU may see, means that Americans posting on American social media in America will find that their speech is governed by the standards set in the EU, territories in which free expression is subject to far more restriction than the United States. Right, and we don't want that. There are those on the right, including at least in the past Donald Trump, who also wanted to amend Section 230, in their case, because it permits online media companies to make their own moderation decisions. that, the, that Those decisions typically, X apart, reflect progressive bias as a major source of concern to many conservatives. But it does not change the fact that social media space is private pop property, a concept that conservatives are supposed to respect. Moreover, monkey, monkeying around with the section's wording could set off a process under which the viewpoint diversity facilitated by social media is eaten away, which results that few with results that few conservatives are likely to appreciate. Yeah, and look... When it comes to, you know, obviously these are private companies, they can moderate their platforms how they want. I don't even think that that argument is relevant anymore because these co companies aren't moderating policies in whatever the way they want. They're moderating their policies with guidance from the federal government. And so I do think, you know, I don't see this happening, but a possible way out is to say, you know, a, a, a platform can moderate its platform however it chooses however if it's found to be working with the federal government in any way or any government agency in any way then it will no longer be allowed to moderate as it sees fit 
because it is the government skirting around the First Amendment using private enterprise. But in, like I said, I, I don't really think it's really relevant anymore to the conversation we're having. I mean, we're, we're past that now. We're past, you know, Facebook admitted admitted to doing it. Elon found that Twitter was doing it. And those are the two big ones, arguably. TikTok's another big one. The Democrats' attack on online free speech is likely to revolve around Section 230 and misinformation. Tim Waltz, before he was running for the vice presidency, said there is no guarantee to free speech on misinformation or hate speech. Yes, there is. Okay? Misinformation and hate speech are free speech. Now, I take much bigger issue with the idea of misinformation than I do hate speech because, again, this is, this is less consequential, in my opinion, than misinformation is. Because with misinformation, any information that the government deems is incorrect they will label as misinformation or disinformation and they will clamp down on social media companies. They will push social media companies to remove that information. And whoever's in power at the time is going to be dictating what is considered proper information. So if it's the Democrats, again, they're going to funnel whatever information down that they believe they, that, that they want you to hear. Now again, hate speech is free speech. You're allowed to say nasty things. That's it. And of course you run into the same issue where who is deciding what exactly is hate speech and what is not. How do you decide something is hate speech in a, in a particularly, in a, in a given context? Or how do you think that, that something is hate speech when it comes to satire? Again, all of these judgments and all of these, all of the meaning given to language should be held within the people. It should be held within the individual, and it should not be the government deciding what you can think, what you can say, uh, what you can see. During his debate with Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance, Waltz defended Democrats' desire for tech companies and the government to work together to suppress misinformation by claiming, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. That's the test. That's the Supreme Court test. The court does not, of course, use that test to make the government the arbiter of truth. And the analogy comes from a 1919 decision that the court tossed aside over a half century ago. Taken altogether, Walt's comments demonstrates that it is not only the party's former leaders who want more Americans to keep more of their thoughts to themselves. Okay. And, and like they said, to be clear, that's not exactly true, that you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Also, it's jumping from A to Z, in my opinion, when you say, oh, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater, so therefore the government should be the sole arbiters of truth. But anyway, look, guys, I am <clears throat> personally, I am very worried. Should Democrats maintain power? Should Kamala Harris get elected? What free speech is going to look like, uh, certainly online, and how the Democratic Party is going to clamp down on social media platforms? Obviously, as a, as a very small content creator, that directly affects me. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's something I think most people should worry about. And that's why I'm making this video to just kind of remind people because, you know, the big day is tomorrow that these are the policy, these are the mainstream policy positions of Democrats. They want to control how you think. They want to control what you can see, what you can say. And again, may, you know, for people out there, who, you know, dislike Trump, consider the fact that you may lose the ability for you to be able to think for yourself. And again, maintain that, that self-respect and dignity within yourself to, to expose yourself to things that you disagree with and to combat things you disagree with with your own speech. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below, guys. If you disagree with anything I've said, please let me know why. Go out and vote tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, I hope it goes well tomorrow. We'll see. But, yeah, take care. Mm -hmm.